and welcome to Voice with Julia and day 10 of our 30 days of breath support. Today we're going to take a little break in our cumulative lesson about breath support and I want to insert some common misconceptions about breathing because I think that there's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of, you know, people saying to do it one way versus this way and I want to break down some of those misconceptions in this video. So stay tuned. But before I go any further, I want to invite all the classical singers in my audience to come join us in Luca, Italy this summer at the Luca Belcanto Institute. This is running September 9th through 16th, and we're really excited about this. It's going to be led by myself and my fantastic tenor friend, Ferdinand von Botma. So we really hope you'll join us. Application and information is down below. So we'll see you there. Voice with two. Without further ado, let's talk about these ideas that have been circulating about breathing. Um, there's several, right? But I want to kind of address some of the more prevalent ideas. And the, the first one that I want to address is the use of the stomach, okay? So this is kind of a misconception. When support is taught, often there's too much of an emphasis placed on pushing the stomach out, right? Okay, now, that might work for some people to think about it that way, especially if they're really like locked and held, right? But it's not actually a great game plan in the long run because actually getting used to pushing out with the abdominal musculature can create a lot of tension in the vocal mechanism. So this is something you want to avoid. Why do I teach ribs out and the epigastric area expanded. This is to maximize the diaphragmatic freedom and motion. This is true bel canto technique, okay? So if you have questions about the stomach, this has to go in relationship to the rib cage held out because what I see a lot of is rib cages down and the singer is going <sighs> singing that way. That can get you into a lot of trouble and there are some even really great singers out there singing major careers that have gotten themselves into trouble by using too much of that force and that push out, which creates tension here. And you can even experiment. I don't suggest you do it while singing, but if you just do it without, you know, without any vocalization, push hard on your abdominals out and now feel that feeling. That's kind of what we want to get away from, right? Now, if you pull really hard in, it does a similar effect in a different way, but there's also tension. So both of those things, the push out and the drastic, like kind of mm, crunching here, this is what we want to avoid, okay? And that's really why this awareness of this area plays so much into understanding of breath support, because you can't talk about what happens in the abdominals without talking about what happens here. Now, for those of you more scientifically minded, the muscle we want to avoid using, avoid using and in, in, I mean, avoid using, we don't completely avoid it, but we want to restrict the movement of the rectus abdominis, okay? So you're not going to be primarily using this long muscle, you know, the six pack muscle. You're not going to be using that to mm, cramp. Now, the lower belly of the rectus abdominis does work a little bit here, down here, okay? but that takes a little while to program the independent motion of that lower belly of the rectus abdominis from the rest. So please, you know, as you're working with this, understand that there will not be perfection from day one. You're going to have to work to that ideal form, okay? So if you can start to feel a little bit of motion in the obliques, that's helpful, but try not to engage this center part right here, okay? Now, another misconception of breathing um, is this idea of breathing into the back ribs, okay? Now, it's not wrong. Actually, there's a lot that's right about that, but let me tell you where it can go wrong, <laughs> is if you start feeling that the back ribs push down the sternum. And I see this a lot. People will inhale and it's this way, okay? But we cannot collapse the sternum. So just like everything in singing, especially high level singing, 
it's always very nuanced. These are not like black and white concepts, right? We have to be very nuanced and very delicate with this. So as you saw in another video, I did talk about kicking out the back ribs, right? But we can't do that at the expense of a downward motion of the sternum. The sternum must stay lifted. So when we feel the rotation of the back ribs, you see that's in relation to a lifted sternum. Now, do you notice what happens when I do that? Is that this whole area is expanded and I can kick out my back ribs there, right? Okay, so this is, this is really important. So if you have been one of those singers that I'm breathing into the back ribs and then you're kind of rounding the, the shoulders and doing this, be very careful that it's not at the expense of the sternum. So yes, you can and you should. <laughs> Let's state this, you should breathe into the back ribs as well, right? But it has to be done keeping everything balanced, yeah? So that's important. Now, another misconception about breathing is how the stomach should be moving when you are singing, okay? Some people think you go in on high notes, in, because you need more air, but this is one of the biggest misconceptions. You don't go in on high notes. Why? Because high notes do not need more air. They need less air, less air. It needs to be faster and more centralized, but less of it. So we need to be thinking about our motion. You know, you probably heard the higher the note, the, the lower the support, right? And what, what does that mean, support? Okay, support, and I, I said this in a video actually, I don't think in the series, but I define support as keeping the breath away from the voice. That is support. We're not trying, we don't need work to try to send the breath to the voice. We don't. If you run up a flight of stairs, really fast, really fast, really fast, and then you <sighs> at the top of It's really easy for air to go out of our lungs. That is super easy. We don't have to work at that, okay? So what we really have to watch is that we're not letting the air out. <clears throat> so when we go to higher pitches, we're not pulling in. We are going down, okay? And opening the pelvic floor, opening these muscles so it's an expanse. So if you're going like an interval, like right, it goes out. It doesn't go in on the high note. You go in. Now, why do we go in and out? Is to retain flexibility so that we're not just in one direction or in another. We're letting that be pliable, okay? That's really, really important. So this in idea on high notes, I really don't subscribe to. There are exceptions, but that's usually if the person has tightness and they're not moving and they're locking. So sometimes if a teacher says go in, it will make it better. Yeah, because they're not gripping and like rockifying their abs, right? So moving in any direction will make it better. But when you get this more refined, you have to learn how to go out to the high notes, not in, okay? That's very important. Now, once you get to a high note, you may go out and then you can bring it back in before you release, that's important. Think about everything in this is a buoyancy, so it's a give and take, right? So I hope that this video cleared up some misconceptions for you all about some common ideas about breath support. And I hope that You'll keep this in your mind as we're working further in this series. See you tomorrow.